Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a quick message for you. Today is 777, July 7th, 2023, which comes which adds up to 777 numerically. And um, the angel number itself is more so about taking time to be in solitude and reflection of your own inner light. And then the numerology, you know, aspect of it is you, fulfilling your dreams, you know, your, your, your dreams and your wishes come into manifestation. And I think the two are in perfect alignment as many of us need to, um, well, all of us actually need to be very self-aware and um, grounded within our internal selves in order to fully attract the desires of our heart and to manifest the lives that we're dreaming of. So hope you're celebrating this portal in a magnificent way. Do some journaling. And, you know, at the bottom of the deck is the Empress, who is the most powerful feminine energy in the deck. Um, this is where I stopped shuffling earlier. And it's very fitting, you know, whether you're masculine or feminine, but obviously this is ma this is feminine energy and we are still in cancer season, which is a highly feminine aspect um, ast astrologically and universally. And it's encouraging us all to just take some extra time to nurture ourselves, to love on ourselves, to be very vigilant about how we are showing up in the world as nurturers and caregivers and creators even, because the Empress is a creative being. Um, and she gives life to not just uh, physical things, but also, um, you know, she's a manifester of sorts. So even if you don't have children or don't aspire to have children, as a, as a masculine or feminine energy, we're all bringing some life force to um, full bloom and creativity. And we, we get to do that by being sure that our um, manifestation fuel is pure and premium. So take some time to really reflect on <clears throat> what you're looking to create for yourself at this time, what um, relationships you wanna foster or, or attract to yourself to help magnify or um, multiply your your manifestations and don't be afraid to be in solitude solitude is a very sacred place even if it it's at um, a discord with others that may be desiring some of your time or energy your first point of service is to self so if self is not fulfilled and whole self cannot serve outside of self okay so 777 we're making our dreams and and wishes come true but we are doing that from a very internal space nurturing ourselves so i'm just going to freak this out and see what happens that's about work i'm pretty sure you can see this whole area which is why i chose this setup this is about um working on self let's call it that working on what brings you joy, what brings you fulfillment. This is a transformative energy or putting a death to something. Maybe worry, I didn't even look at the bottom of the other one. Worry and doubt and anxiety, we're putting a rest to that. Again, not if you're being stretched thin or being called to multiple spaces, it's okay to just separate and, and shut it down altogether. <laughs> okay for the purposes of nurturing you. Man, I made a mess. There we go. All right, let's 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 start back at one. There's the Empress again at the bottom of the deck. Let's see what that is. Quick communication coming in, fast action. Um, maybe even energies that you have Hmm, let's see. Fast movement. Um, let's see. Let me see what's after that. Ace, eight, that's the eight of wands. So we got two eights on the board. Death card. Eight of pentacles. Eight of wands. I didn't look at the bottom. That would have told me more about the eight of wands. Because 
Eight of Wands can be so much. It can be fast communication coming in from a divine space, enlightenment. It can be coming from a physical space or from actual people, maybe news about some form of transition with the death card or transformation or an upgrade is also what I hear. While you're working on yourself, meanwhile, you're being transformed beyond what you even realize and the upgrade of spiritual energy um, is coming into you on account of that work. That actually makes a lot of sense, especially in this 777 energy. Let's see. Oh, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> So I want to take all these. Oh, my damn neighbor's got a dog. All right, so let's see what we got. Let's see if I can spin them here. Yes, they did. Well, isn't that something? All right, so we got fast communication coming in about a new idea to expand um, creatively, a, a new inspiration perhaps, and it may, you know, put you in... Um, a unique position to begin a project um, that may make you feel like, you know, it's something foreign and new terrain, um, new territory that you're entering in that may be uh, unfamiliar. But this is also the Queen of Pentacles who definitely gives the energy that she's equipped for anything as long as she's in spiritual alignment. Again, with this 7-7 seven, seven energy, if you're staying in alignment with self and what self needs, she's also a nurturer. That's also cancer energy. Then um, you will prove to be in the position that you've been ordained. You'll prove to be the rightful position person for the position you've already been ordained to um, to. Uh, operate in. So this card here, the Three of Pentacles, is speaking about um, there being some co co collaboration of sorts. Maybe you working with other people, working with new people, a new group of people, or there being um, some type of uh, recruiting energy that is scouting you out for a position. Maybe you're up for a new job or you're in the market for a new position of some sort, um, or there's just some people that are looking at what you do and looking at the energy that you possess, how you do your special job, your special, you know, whatever this position is where you're in the passionate state of work, you know, loving what you do and how that translates and multiplies into something that is valuable for some other group or a company or um, some collaborative effort, you have something that is, um, and this card here even speaks to that with this, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see how it this card even speaks to that with someone looking. Now, usually it's, this can be, this sometimes I'll say, can be a very low vibrational uh, perspective of watching and stalking and lurking, which be mindful of too, because just as much as people are seeing the value of you to be a positive addition or collaboration or connection to some people are actually watching to um, to either block your progression or see how they can align with it for some self interest or self absorbed reason that's really not as uh, as productive as it is um, distractive. You know what I mean? So you're the queen of cups, you're the queen of wands, still in that feminine energy. Typically queens and kings are true to their um, their essence as masculine and feminine energies, but certainly with us being in cancer energy and you know, um, it what like I was saying earlier, being very connected to how we're nurturing ourselves. That's a very feminine aspect of being that we all embody some more than others, of course. Even in a masculine or feminine energy, you may be more of a masculine, have a masculine essence than you do feminine and vice versa. But we're all being called in the season to tune into how we're nurturing ourselves, nurturing our um, our emotional intelligence, our uh, our our psychic um, in, intuition, and things like that. And also, being mindful while I'm here of what you're connecting with. So, although the deal or the offering may seem, you know, really good, 
And it may be, it's still about you maintaining a, a, a position of integrity with this Queen of Cups and Queen of Wands. She knows that she's, she's not just going to act on emotional impulses, but she's going to also be in tune to what is in the highest integrity of and with her passion and her power so that she's not just saying yes to anything because I heard say yes to the dress. <laughs> hey, there you go. There might be even some um, advances toward a relationship connection. Don't just say yes for the sake of wanting to be chosen or you know, wanting to be in, in relationship or connection or not wanting to be lonely, perhaps, um, you know, make sure that it's in alignment, true alignment with what is authentic to you, what adds to your life's work, what um, compels you to transform into your highest self, to continue to um, be in, it, in the state of advancement in your power and in your purpose and what um, f makes you feel protected psychologically and emotionally and things like that that foster this sense of um, comfort and security with who you are naturally. You be mindful to only, a, many people might be coming to the table offering shiny things for your your shiny energy, but just make sure you know you don't take no wooden nickels, as they say, and it's truly something that um, is in is in integrity with who you are, uh, truly, and who you and the things that you want to create for yourself and um, beyond yourself. Yeah, the Queen of Wands is a leader. She knows exactly what to do with the power that she possesses. She knows how to invest it how to res reserve it, restrain it at times. She's not just flying off the handle with that Queen of Cups energy there. It's a, it's a great balance of passion and purpose. All right. Knowing your value and being confident in that creativity is also key. That confidence is key because then you won't settle for anything. You'll know exactly what to say yes to and what to say no to. All right, so let's see what else we got. This one. Yep, that's now the three of three of uh, wands, which is waiting on your ships to come in, waiting on this opportunity to come to you. Being in a feminine energy, you don't have to go running out trying to conquer anything in particular or seeking any place of acceptance. Yeah, you don't need to seek any places of acceptance, any validations, you know, from external forces. These are energies that are um, energies of power. It can be an establishment itself. It can be a, a group that establishes itself as some collective force. You know, you the point I'm, tr I'm, I'm making here is that you don't have to go seeking validation or um, commitment even with the Hierophant because that's all can also be a marriage card. You don't have to go running after anything. In a feminine energy, which is where we are called to be, what is due to you will find you. And here's the temperance card that's balancing all things in spirit and in truth. It's being done for you and it's pretty much being brought to you on a silver platter. You know, the things that are for you to have. Um, and, and the most that we have to do or get to do, I should say, is to be in a, in a place of divine alignment, spirit, mind, body, so that you can attract those things to yourself and not the adverse of the energies you're wishing to call in. Wow, look at this year. Look at this. So you can attract those energies, yes, and it'll put you in a higher exalted position of power and inspiration to not just be the emperor, but the empress of your estate. My God, that's embodying both the masculine and feminine powers in a balanced way, creating strong boundaries to protect this divine power. And that's what's, what has come down from this position here of just working honestly and integral, integrally, is that a word? <laughs> in integrity on your purpose, on your passion, on 
the gifts, using the gifts that you have and, and allowing them to manifest organically, you know, with you watering it with your attention and your devotion and commitment, but it being very or in a, in, or in or, an organic process in itself that brings this transformation of, of status and uh, prosperity and power and passion and um, enlightenment, intelligence, recognition, even with the three of pentacles, elevation also with the three of pentacles, exaltation here with the hierophant leading into, this is like a God-ordained um, passionate beginning, like double confirmation here. It's and, and to me, it's saying that, you know, you could settle, this is interesting, because you could settle for the man-made exaltation, you know, as you're waiting for your ships to come in, sometimes we get a little bit impatient and we feel like we got to go make it happen or got to figure out, get off our throne and figure out what's going on. You could get um, stopped and short, you could shortchange yourself in human validation. So, Instead of you waiting for the ideal position, you go out and just get the first job you can get because you need to make some money. Or you waiting for um, the ideal relationship, you you know reach back and grab somebody that you're comfortable with or that you know you're familiar with and decide, well, this this is good enough. You know, this is almost a settlement energy here in a sense, even though the hierophant is a very you know, generally it's a um, it's a major arcana. It's a it's a high vibration of a card in its highest vibration, but it can also be a shortstop when we're comparing what is man made and what is divinely ordained, and that's the difference between these two. This is pure passion right here that is a gift of God, more or less, or whatever it is you submit to. It's it's attracted from the very nature and essence of you. This can be manipulated and, you know, this, you know, it can be manipulated by you or even imposed from an outside force as some gift of passion or some gift of prosperity that looks really good, but it might not even balance out, equal out to what it, what it um, projects itself to be. But when it comes from an ethereal space and you've done the work, as they say, to cleanse your energy, to take care of yourself, to um, connect with your true value. This is something that comes down and can't be tampered with. It can't be obstructed. Um, it, it won't be misleading. It won't, it'll be, um, it'll be eternal because it's ethereal. You know, it's something that you attracted from the highest vibration of you. And what does that do but exalt your position from just a mere queen you know, to actual embodying the masculine and feminine energies of the highest, most powerful entities in the deck in terms of, you know, the king and the queens are concerned. This is all the kings in one. This is all the queens in one. There's nothing to be to desired of these energies when they're in their highest form, you know, and that's, that's the aspiration that we're after. Yes, certainly in this cancer energy and the feminine aspect we're, we're looking to nurture, but we also want to feel secure. We also want to feel protected. We want to feel stable and grounded in our pursuits and in our passions. And um, the way that we get to that grounding is to wait to be connected with divine inspiration, what to do next from that um, pure, cleansed out spirit of, you know, of self-awareness and self-certainty, where it's, it's untainted by, because a lot of times we have, like this card, we have a lot going on around us. Everybody wants something from us. People, places, and things, um, a lot of things aren't necessarily in alignment with who we feel um, called to, how we feel called to um, to move forward. You know, this is an exercise of passion here. And this person just wants to stand his ground, but he has all this opposition up against him. Six, six wands up against his one that are either trying to point him in some direction, lead him in some direction, block him from going in some direction. You know, it's just, it's a distraction and it's an obstruction. 
And when we are certain in who we are and what we're called to do, we can erect strong boundaries so that all there, all we need to do is be certain that of a thing being in alignment or not. You know what I mean? Like, if it doesn't match up to this Ace of Wands, like that's the marker is what I'm hearing. He's holding the Ace of Wands. This is the Ace of Wands. If it doesn't match up to this divine alignment of passion, pure passion, purpose, um, objectivity, creativity, you know, cre creativity that is divinely inspired, that has a purpose, that has a position, that has um, a place not only in your life, but that also... Um, makes an impact on others. If it's not in alignment with what you've already established energetically for yourself, then you have to erect a strong boundary. And that could be people, places, and things. This goes back to that 777 of taking time to really connect to your inner light. If it's not helping to illuminate that inner light, no matter how intimate the connection may be or how distant, it's up to you to be the authority in your in your space and say no this this gets to stay this gets to go or everything gets to go and i just need to be in solitude on my throne right now to discern what direction is best for me holistically and then you know maybe those boundaries don't last forever but every now and again we have to kind of get alone and that's the thing about society like we are so conditioned to be dependent and codependent on one another and on people places and things like we are almost afraid to be alone or made to feel that if we are alone then there's something wrong with us. Or if we want to be alone, there must be something wrong with us. But being in a space of solitude is the most sacred space you can be in because that's the space that has the least distractions where God can truly speak to you, your highest self, your that um, space of, of understanding can speak can be cleared so that you can hear and that and you can be led through your internal jay you can be led through your internal compass as to um you know your next direction whether it is to just sit still for a little bit longer whatever the case may be sometimes it's hard to hear what's best for us and here's that next direction the chariot card it's sometimes it's it's hard to hear because we're surrounded by so much and we're inundated with so much noise. Um, even the white noise is is deafening at times, you know, that that's just almost like background, but we're, and we're so used to it, we don't even realize that it's creating a disturbance in our spirit. You sometimes have to just clear everything out and completely, you know, start from square one, um, zero volume, <laughs> you know, ground zero, whatever the case may be, maybe take a day off from work if you need to, you know, um, take a few hours away from the home, the kids or whatever your obligations are, however you can get alone, even if it's just for 15 minutes, find some space. I, I encourage that for at least 15 minutes a day, if possible, to find some space of solitude so that you can always be in connection with your inner, your inner voice, you know, above all else. But this is the chariot card, which is about moving ahead from some tumultuous um, past. This is the tumultuous past, the space of competition, not unlike, where's that other one again? Oh, that was the, um, the seven of wands where you were protecting yourself more or less from this energy, this competition, this confusion people vying for your time and your energy, people, places, and things, because it could very much so be places and things as much as it is people. And sometimes, most times, it's the, pe it's the people, places, and things that we have attached ourselves to. So it's about um, moving forward from a attachments that are, excuse me, distractive, if not destructive, ultimately a distraction can become a destruct a destructive force if you allow it to go on too long because it can deter you from your present state of awareness, you know, keeping this energy, this aid of wands from coming in, this divine information, intel, 
um, understanding, whatever, the, whatever it is that's trying to pour into you. If you're surrounded by this type of energy, you know, you could miss, you could miss the message, you know, and, and ultimately miss an opportunity to move forward in a victorious, successful way in this new exalted space of power. And that's, that would be a sin and a shame, wouldn't it, to come so far and to somehow, you know, miss the opportunity? No, you, it's up to you to do whatever you need to do to, to reach that, um, that finish line. Yep, and here's the Queen of Wands, who is the one who we know. I don't know if you can see all the way over there. The Queen of Wands, she's that one. You know, when energies are coming in like a flood, like this, aggressively with their own personal agendas and with their own self-interest, um, with, with some idealistic um, thoughts on how they can align or even block her energy or block her progress to create mental um, instability or distraction because these swords are mental energy. Um, the Queen of Swords is one that is reasonable, reasonable enough. She's not quite the King of Swords because he's going to chop you at the door. But she's, <laughs> she's reasonable enough to perhaps hear you out. But if it doesn't align with her sword of truth, which often the Knight of Swords does not, you know, that's a lesser um, energetic force that, you know, is really a mismatch between the Queen and, you know, for the Queen. So anything that more or less that he has to say is, you know, is going to have to be considered carefully because it's coming from a different point of view and position of authority and power. Whereas she's the Queen for a reason because she's mastered her her uh, her intelligence and her self-awareness and she knows how to communicate her truth effectively and honestly. She thrives on honesty as a matter of fact. So anything coming back to the whole, you know, energy of the reading, if it's not in alignment with what you know to be true of yourself and what you know is your focus and your objective, then she takes that, that sword of truth and she cuts down the night, you know, if need be. And that's that's not just, you know, exclusive to the night. That's anything that's out of alignment with her her truth, you know. So that's how again, that's how um that's how intentional we must be about creating boundaries for ourselves because people can come in, energies can come in and tell you anything, offer you anything. Now this is the page of pentacles which is in an altogether um, negative energy. It's just a smaller offer. So, you know, generally it could be a message to, to prosper in an energetic way or material way. Um, but again, you have to consider that all good, um, offers are not good for you. So even though this page of pentacles might be good for, for some or somewhere, it may not necessarily align with what your needs and desires are and what you need to accomplish your purpose and and um, and what you need to be, you know, profitable and prosperous on your path. For me, with this page of pentacles coming up in here with the page of swords too, you know, to, after, the, after the queen of swords, that's just also um, to me just like, further confirming that you just have to be discerning not to misalign your energy with things that are a mismatch. You know, it, like I said, it might not be a negative offer. It might be divine in its own right, but just because it is doesn't mean it's divine in alignment with you. So you could ultimately, you know, I'm getting a sense like, you know, you might feel like you 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 may be reaching a certain position of of power and authority in your life in a job or just in general, you know, in your perspective of your position in life. And for a lot of us, we that have been in some lower vibrational energies, maybe have struggled. Sometimes you want to help everybody. You know, sometimes you see an opportunity where you can be of great value and assistance to a person, place or thing. But you there's really not much of an exchange right there as far as you're concerned. Now, I'm not saying that you, you should only be looking to do things that are going to benefit you because that would kind of, you know, that would be a little bit narcissistic in a sense too. But 
also on the same breath, you have to realize that you can't help everybody. Everybody, you know, um, everybody's walking their own path at their own pace on their own timeline, you know, in this realm that we're sharing. And just because you have the resources to help doesn't necessarily mean that you have the right to. It might not be in a divine alignment for you to assist or, um, you know, align with a particular cause or faction or entity or a group of people or a job or a project or business, even if you can see the value you could bring to it. You have to be extremely discerning because one poor investment, even with the best intentions, could be a detriment to your bottom line if you're not careful. And the goal of you know prosperity is to be as impactful um, in the highest vibration as possible. So what does it profit your productivity for you to give all that you have to a page of pentacles offer, to a page of swords offer, knowing it was out of alignment with your queen of wands, queen of swords, queen of cups, by God, emperor, empress energy. Um, and now you have, because of that that connection and that investment, it has depleted you from being a, being able to be an impact or make an impression on an even greater scale. Maybe stops your progress altogether. You you have to be careful because there are a lot of um, sneaky energies out here. You know, the magician right now is giving me manipulation in this sense where. There are energies that may want to play on your kindness, your generosity, um, play on your power, your your loving spirit, your your grace, even knowing that you have a heart to help and a heart to heal and a heart to be of value to others. And just just as soon as you go to um, contribute to that force, whatever that energy might be, is as soon as you might magically find yourself in the same position or on the same level. So you um, actually Mystic Tori said something good um, in the message recently about what did she say? Assignment versus um, attachment, something along those lines, which is kind of in the, in the space of what I've been saying here. Some people you may actually be assigned to help that you're in a position to do so. And some people just may be looking to attach to what to the value that you have because they see an opportunity to, you know, to manifest from it or to monopolize from it, which is that magician's card right there in the lowest vibration. So you got to keep your eyes peeled. Because everybody is, everybody is out for self right now in some way, shape, or form. Even you should be in, in the most pure and um, passionate way. But being out for self doesn't necessarily mean it has to be at the cost of others. Certainly not at the demise of others. But recognize that some people are very much so in that energy. Just strictly on the basis of wanting to survive altogether. Yeah, wanted to survive these states of regret and depression and remorse and, you know, the the um, repercussions of, of poor investments, honestly. And this energy is contagious, <laughs> regardless of what, you know, that's why that Eight of Swords, um, Eight of Wands energy, I'm sorry, I think it was Seven of Wands energy is important to protect your passion and your peace because those that are looking to, we're all human and we're always looking to survive, but there are some that are willing to take more risks and more chances um, on, the, on the backs of others to do so. And by any means necessary to kind of claw themselves out of this position of despair that ultimately, you know, they put themselves in more or less. You know what I mean? Everybody has been given choices to, um, to govern themselves accordingly in this life. And some people are in a disadvantaged space because of um, circumstances that were imposed. And some of them are in disadvantaged spaces because of positions, I mean, because, of, um, because of choices that were made. And, and ultimately, you know, the karma, will of fortune, and there's that seven of wands again, because of the karma, that has incurred on account and karma is very much so contagious so if you're trying to help somebody out of their karma 
while you know and and you're not ordained to do so you will most certainly become the benefactor of those circumstances just by association so here we go with the knight of pentacles now this is about this is an advancement of an offer in a sense knight of pentacles is usually a positive um energy as well but in this sense it's telling me that some people have maybe turned around too late to realign their their um their vibrations in a way that would be a match for your energy so this is past energy again coming to present itself in some new form to realign with you but even still as as as, po as positive as the knight of pentacles can be amidst the other knights the swords the wand and the cups we always say that the night is the most stable, but yet and still, where's the matchup? Is not matching with the queen and the queens here. You we got all three queens on the deck right now, plus the empress. The only thing that's missing um, is who? Who's missing? The queen of pentacles, which can be implied in the empress because she's all the queens anyway. So if you got a knight of pentacles trying to offer, say, a queen of pentacles. Um, this coin, what value does that truly make in her kingdom? You know, as, as stable as that energy may be, maybe you have people coming back to the table that have grown a great deal from this, this childlike position to more, um, you know, a more mature state of being and have grown in the ways that they manage their energy and have learned from their past mistakes and their, and have um, realigned themselves in a positive direction from previous choices. That's all well and good. And here with the Hierophant card, card here, grant them grace. And um, what, they, what, what does Melody say? I wish you something. God bless you on your journey. <laughs> God bless them on their journey. Indeed, like harbor no hard feelings or ill will whatsoever. And pray for you know, energies that are aligned and, and misaligned with you all alike because we're all connected and impacted somehow, some way by one another. But it doesn't mean that you have to put yourself in a direct alignment physically, emotionally, energetically, spiritually, in any way, shape or form, even if there's some change evident in the energy as it presents itself. And that's in the person, place or thing. You don't have to feel obligated to be in connection with anything that is not of true value to your purpose and your passion. There is no, um, there, there's no, what's the right word? Um, there's no guilt, you know, to be absorbed whatsoever. Even that energy alone here in this five of cups card, that's part of that energy as well. There's no guilt to be absorbed. Um, that would be productive to any kingdom or any path that you have to embark upon. It, it doesn't it doesn't grow. So you can release that energy again. God bless them on their journey, but maintain your position um, of authority and power um, and accountability for your own actions and um, keep those boundaries strong ultimately and put things to rest uh, indefinitely you know at least now until ordained otherwise but don't let things linger and don't let them be in limbo you know having people on edge about what you're going to do or where you stand not that you have to go you know sending out text message and emails or announcing your present position but be clear i guess is what i'm trying to say about um communicating your boundaries don't be afraid to be clear and say this is what i want and need right now and that and being clear about what you expect to be respected lay things to rest literally and you take your rest as well knowing that you've done what you've needed to do in integrity it it's okay to take a rest right now i feel like i should say that you know it's okay to be in a restful state of mind and not to be anxious in any in anything at this time to do anything to say anything or to be anything more than what is organic to you and here is the five of pentacles like i was saying is is these are the octaves of the choices that you make to be in alignment with things that are out of alignment with you here you have 
pardon me, the Knight of Pentacles. But like I said, some things are just too late, a little too little, too late, you know, and, and ultimately will lead you into this state of despair or poverty and even in the most physical sense or even just being poor in spirit or having low energy. That's what I hear too. Some things that, you know, may not necessarily uh, present themselves to be um, a danger to you on the surface might ultimately just drain your energy to keep up with. So you trying to balance this um, imbalanced energy with yours on a higher octave might actually deplete you in ways that you don't even realize right away and ultimately keep you from att attaining this, which again is like the Ace of Wands, but the Ace of Pentacles, which is again divinely ordained, is the fulfilling um, material manifestation that you've attracted. You cannot attract it from a depleted state. You can't attract it from people that are um, playing on your energy, that are siphoning your energy, whether they mean to or not, because let's, let's be real, a lot of the people, places, and things that we submit to and align with aren't even intentional about depleting us, but they do because of the misalignment and they do because we fail to set healthy boundaries to protect ourselves from that misalignment or protect ourselves from that impact of energy, um, harvesting honestly and then of course like i said earlier there are some that don't mean to and there are some that absolutely mean to <laughs> there are some that are looking to drain your energy to absorb it for self because they've depleted theirs or mismanaged their, theirs and that's in a material sense and an energetic sense because it, it's energetic before it's material right and it's certainly spiritual before it's energetic or one in the same where some people are looking to, you know, fill up on your good energy because they don't have any other source at this time. Where it is you're sitting here literally with the, the emperor and the empress harvesting the most divine seed you can possibly harvest where you can keep planting this over and over and it just continues to yield fruit prosperously. But you could be stopped short of that once again if you invest that token into the wrong, if you sow that seed into the wrong soil. You want to sow seeds into good soil where they can plant and be fruitful, not just for you. You know, this is a this is a um a fulfilled stature, you know, where if this is you, then you have uh, the ability to share from a place of fulfillment and in a balanced way. There, there's no imbalance here. And even those, again, as I was saying before, that you are assigned to help are benefiting from your energy um, on a, on, in the highest vibration because you're given from a place that you, you're always already filled in. You're not given from <clears throat> what you don't have to give. You're given into those that are assigned to receive. So that seed is good soil. And what they do with that energy that's invested is going to manifest in <clears throat> a magnificent way. And hopefully will then turn the table so that they can be you given to others that they're assigned to help. Like each one definitely teach one and reach one for sure. But it has to be in divine ordinance. It has to be balanced. And the six absolutely implies even with this, the Ace of Pentacles adding to the seven, we got our 777, seven, seven, that jackpot right there. That is a jackpot type of energy where you invest into good soil, you sow into good soil, and that harvest then feeds um, other inhabitants. And because they're filled, they can sow into others and fill others, and those others can fill others. And then it's just a continuous cycle of prosperity as opposed to this where you are pouring into, um, you know, soil that is soiled, <laughs> literally, or cold and, you know, detached and just not ripe for, for producing. And ultimately, you're throwing it away, you know, because it's not it's not really manifesting much at this state in the game, but more despair, more fear, more codependency, you know, definitely not harvesting creativity from that state. So it's like, you know, all, like I say, you're ultimately just throwing away prosperity, stopping it dead in its tracks. Oh, and here goes the king of pentacles. There we go. The king pen, you know, he's. 
he's the one that knows how to make money, make make money work for him. That's that's exactly the octave of energy you want to be in as you receive the Ace of Pentacles, the highest, pardon me, the most powerful and highest vibration of seed. You want to be in a position to manifest it and harvest it over and over again. You want to be in the energetic position to know how to save it, know how to reinvest it, know how to um, magnify it, um, you know, know who to it and know who to invest it in, know how to align it with other um, opportunities so that it grows. The idea here, here is prosperity, not entitlement, you know, not um, sowing into self self interest that don't yield any uh, don't yield any prosperous fruit. You know, this. that's what this energy is giving me. And these two, this is still in balance. The Knight of Swords and the King of Pentacles. Not trying to save all the homies, <laughs> you know, trying to give to all your cousins, trying to invest in, you know, the family because they feel like you should because, you know, you got it. And if you got it, it should be theirs too. And in some regards, yes, we are here to be, the leaders of our generation and generational cycle breakers, curse breakers, as you know, is commonly referred to, especially by way of wealth and prosperity. Many of us are, in fact, given these great um, and these great advantages in prosperity, so that we can be the ones to change the cycle. But just know that changing the cycle doesn't necessarily mean taking care of everybody that feels entitled to be taken care of. Sometimes you break the cycle just by being the example of doing so, so that others can see that it's possible for them to do whatever they need to do to get in alignment to attract the same you know, opportunity for advancement. And again, it doesn't mean that you have to be selfish and say, I got mine, you go get yours. But it does mean that you have to be discerning. It might mean that instead of you just giving out cars and houses and, you know, money, you know, f throwing money away to anybody with their handout, maybe you establish a family trust or maybe, you know, for the generations of kids that are coming behind you so that when they're ready to spread their wings, they have a, a bank, you know, to go to, an opportunity to do so without a second thought. Or maybe it means you start a family business so that there is a continuous um, span of prosperity that's coming in and, and a cycle, that, a new cycle of prosperity that started and not just, you know, squandering money on material things, houses, cars, jewelries, dinners, trips, you know, all the things that make life fun, sure, indeed. But think about the longevity of the seed that you've, the gift, which is this, ultimately, the gift that you've been given to be the sole executor of your estate, and that's S-O-U-L. You know, so be careful. Keep your boundaries for that entitlement. And it's up to you ultimately, again, to just be discerning and strong um, because you being the gift holder puts you in the position to ultimately say that this is my responsibility and, and, my, and I'm to take accountability for this great you know, grace that that the universe has granted unto me. And that part is on you because if you go and squander it all and give it away and have nothing to show for it, you won't have family and friends to blame. You know, if it was given to you, it's your responsibility. So just as much as you, you know, you get to not um, necessarily be selfish with it and be a hoarder, you also have the responsibility to be smart as well. You know, so so let's let's see one more for the, or maybe one or two more because I like this little space down here. I want to fill up. I don't even know if you can see it. You probably can't. But let's see. And this guy just wanted to come out so bad. So just let him get his shine. The Knight of Swords and he fell on the floor <laughs> where he probably belongs, you know, jump into his own demise because that's just further confirming to just keep your boundaries protected from entitlement. You know, I'm not even going to go no more. And and, uh, and look at this. Look what tried to come up. Yep. And then I'm going to probably just end it here. The, the alignments with, this is that 
you know, these are contracts and, and commitments that we make in a physical form. You know, the, the, the um, lover's card is one octave of divine alignment and connections and commitment. But when I see the two of cups, it implies that it could be, you know, it could be man-made, you know, not to say that there's anything holistically wrong with that. But here with the devil card, that's an absolute call and the 10 of, oh, hell no. <laughs> No. And the Ten of Wands, which is about betrayal, and was well, the end of a, 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 betray, a cycle of betrayal, but one that has kept you bound, kept you from having a new beginning, kept you from celebrating freely, kept you from having multiple choices, maybe even kept you in illusions about the choices that you have, kept you from making a plan to what? Ultimately get to what? The lovers. And that being in the most high vibrational sense with the temperance card here, divine alignment, people, places, and things that are in um, the highest octave of, of commitment and connectivity with you because you attract from the highest point of alignment to the, to it, to it, he, she, it, they, whatever. This is the competition for that energy here. But the angel here in between that competition it speaks to me that it's already being balanced. Like whatever you've experienced in the past, whatever is even trying to present itself presently or wants to position itself to be a future obstruction is already out of alignment with the timeline that you're on now that many of us are on. Many of us that have accepted the call here at this stage to really work on ourselves, to be transformed, to be renewed by the spirit. That's what I'm getting here into some and almost be reborn because this is a childlike energy and, and to exercise our divine positions of power and, and um, passion here in this sense and allow the ordinance that's already been set on our lives from um, in heaven as it is in earth to play out in our waking life, to accept the call more or less on our lives. Have We've already kind of put a rest to this energy because you have elevated yourself in such a way to transcend this vibration of competition and chaos, you know, to transcend this vibration of where is it that illusion card to transcend this vibration of illusion and delusion about yourself and about your surroundings to transcend um obsessions and addictions and dependencies and um restrictions and um what's the other word that comes up with the devil card um restrictions and i forget the other word but it's pretty much about uh, limitations, limitations, because the spirit of the divine is unlimited. Um, to transcend moments in our lives when we thought that we were betrayed or held back or blocked or, you know, blinded and not aware of what our surroundings were, not even aware of our own potential power to release ourselves from our surroundings, come to find out we were just being ushered into our into a new beginning. This space here where we could really be, discover um, the totality of ourselves and the totality of our power and just how much the heavens and, our, you know, this being our heavenly host, ancestors, angels, way showers, guys are truly not only guiding our path forward, but celebrating our progress all the way. This energy is connected to all the low vibrational stuff. Hold on, Jay. This energy is connected to all of that low vibrational energy here that we want subscribe to um, inadvertently and intentionally. You know, we've some of it's been imposed, but some of us have absolutely just subscribed to it because, you know, it felt comfortable to do so or it was just what we knew. You know, we've been afraid to break away from commitments that we felt bound to. But in actuality, these these are you're not bound. You're not bound to any anything but the the most high. You know, and that's the most high expression of yourself. Call it God, call it universe, call it higher power. It really doesn't matter what you call it as long as you recognize it as being a force that calls you to be higher and greater and more expansive than you've ever been in a natural sense. And it's looking to expand that um, ethereal energetic essence of you, which is known already beyond you in an earthly sense, you know, in the earthly realm, so that this two of wands, I'm sorry, this two of cups in um, 
you know, I'm sorry, this lover's card and the ethereal vibration ultimately translates to be the expression and the earthly vibration. Um, balance, these cups are balanced, you know, by the divine because you've positioned yourself to be in alignment with it. You can't attract it if it's not, in, if you're not in alignment. So if you're still harboring um, old contracts and commitments that look like this, then it's going to be hard for you to, tr for that, for, to attract, it's damn near impossible for you to attract this energy. So back to the very beginning of this entire reading, which comes down to you coming to a space of solitude and, and, and certainty within yourself to know exactly what vibration you're on right now. What is it that you are um, in alignment with that is working for you? And what are you in alignment with that may, you know, be a detriment to your well-being, that may be distracting, that may be unhealthy, that may, um, you know, be limiting your highest potential, which ultimately is this here. You know, this is who you've already been called and ordained to be, you whole and complete, connecting with the things in the earth that are also whole, whole and complete in a mirror and match to, to your, your energy destined from the not only destined from you know an ethereal space but also that um it's, it's that ethereal essence being very well matched in the earth or at least the potential for it to be so like the help is here there's no limitation for it to be uh, a true in its true form in the earth in a physical actual factual way the only um gateway to it all is what you've aligned to in the natural sense so this is spirit this is truth you know this is heaven this is earth so look at your your um your uh commitments your alignments your arrangements your contracts everything that you have connected yourself with and really be honest with how much of a balance it reflects in your life what does it really afford you in real time? How does it impact you energetically, spiritually, psychologically, mentally, physically? What's the match here? Is If there's a mismatch, then it's an opportunity for you to call on divine help if need be to help bring things back into alignment. For some, that may mean you removing yourself. For, for others, it might be you removing other people, places, and things. You know, it might be in addition to some other habit or person, place or thing that would help you, um, you know, that would help you along your journey. But it's always going to start from a personal, intimate space within you first and foremost. So get real with yourself on this 777. This whole energy to me is about jackpot energy, about the fulfillment of dreams and tr and full potential being a 100% possibility and it all being within the power that you possess to just make the choices, you know, um, to align with the vibration that would allow that energy to manifest in real time. So happy 777 to you. Your dreams are yours for the fulfillment. Protect your boundaries, protect your peace. Don't be, um, you don't be swayed by any energetic um, entitlements imposed on you from the outside in or from the inside out. Don't make yourself feel obligated to do anything but take care of you and your responsibilities um, at this time. And anything else can, can sacredly and sufficiently be secondary. God says so, okay? And if you don't believe God says so, then just take my word for it. I said so. How about that? <laughs> And you can take that to the bank. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace.